All right. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, March 3rd meeting for the planning board. Now, can everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Introduction to board members. To the far left, we have Jerry Graybill. We have Dave Andreessen. We have myself, Michael LaRue, and Paul Amatucci. Right. And we also have Jenny McCabe, the code enforcement officer, and Tammy Town Planner present. Next is going to be the public comment. Okay, saying no one step forward. We'll finish that. And next is approval of minutes. Um, I saw one thing. It's just a quick typo. It's all the way down. On the last page, on the subdivision, it's 14 lines down after the bullet, where it says evaluation for final period, traffic study, it says do. Do, yep. okay. So just does, not warrant. Um, that was the only thing I, I saw on that. Make a motion to uh, approve the um, planning board minutes as amended. I'll second. Okay. Uh, for the discussion, all in favor? Okay. No public hearings. So now we're on to old business subdivision signatures of approval, approved plan for Michael and Aaron Sikowski, six lot subdivision tax map R29, lot five. I couldn't roll or pull these because one has to be approved, have to go to the registry. Okay. So you want the pen? Yeah. My magic pen. As long as you sign all three copies in the same order, please. Can you come back here? Yeah. Is it the mortgage or not? Can you come back here? That would be helpful. Okay. What I'll do is I'll get to you and then you can figure out who you want to send it to. Okay. Okay.
All right. Moving forward, we have site plan review application, House of Hope Recreational Center, 25 Sawmill Hill Road, tax map U1, lot 14. Good evening. Uh, Jeff Oliva with Civil Consultants here representing Mike Hennessy in the House of Hope with this proposed project to uh, construct a community center. Um, I've got Mike here so we can answer questions that come up during about the operation of the of the center itself. Um, so what we're proposing is a, uh, a structure to be placed on uh, a section of the existing of the site. I'm going to switch over to the existing coverage. Um, so we have the old church site that's uh, being used uh, to, to help residents. There's a parking lot in this area, and this is where the building is going to go off of Sawmill Hill Road. Um, <coughs> the blue outline is the edge of the building. Uh, what we're doing here is redeveloping the entrance to be a one-way entrance in and out off of Sawmill for drop-off. Uh, allows uh, big enough in here for school buses and bus traffic. Uh, we're updating some parking to have some ADA compatible handicap parking here. We've adjusted some parking on this side. Uh, we received some comments from uh, planning staff about addressing other parking, and we could talk about that later on. Um, but other than that, it's, re it's really working in this space to bring in um, a facility uh, that will be available to the public uh, for um, a lot of different options uh, to, to assist the... Uh, the downtown area. I guess I'll let M Mike just jump in and give a, a brief rundown of the, of the, the intent, and then we can go, and go into the site plan review and answer your questions. Evening. How are you guys? Good. Good. Yeah. So the, the overall goal is just to be a, a, a blessing in the community and be an outreach. So we're going to have an um, indoor soccer field, indoor basketball court, mm. um, youth rooms, exercise rooms, indoor walking track. Um, a movie room, just a place where, where, where teens and even like preteens can go to hang out after school, get homework help, um, mentorship programs. Um, some of that stuff we're going to develop as we go. But initially, I think we're going to start off probably with the basketball court and the soccer field. And just as we can afford to finish the interior, we'll add more programs as we go. Um, that, in a nutshell, is the, is the goal. What about 43-year-old uh, males? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, initially, because I think we're also going to have like basketball leagues, but I think we're going to start off kind of slow just to, to try to do a good job. I yeah, think if we try said. to do too much too quickly, I think it, uh, we want to avoid a train wreck. So, that's what you said, yeah. Yeah, but I think, I mean, men's leagues would be great, um, basketball and soccer. Um, but again, as opportunities present themselves, um, we, we definitely want to take as many opportunities as we can to use the building as much as possible. Because um, an empty building doesn't really reach anybody. So, I had another question. Um, what is the what is the outside of the building going to look like? What's the outside design, the color, the uh, specifications for that? So I know this this was an issue. I think about eight years, no, six years ago. You wanted to put something up there, but and, and we were just yeah, we were just kind of throwing it out there, just just as a. Uh, to see what was what you guys were looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, color-wise, we're kind of open to anything. We're thinking more like a red, like a barn. It's going to be a metal building, and we're thinking in the front having a very long overhang, so kids, when they when they come or when they leave and they're waiting for parents to pick them up, they have a place that's that's kind of undercover to hang out and wait. Um, but as far as color goes, we're thinking more of like like a making it look more like a barn red, maybe. But I mean. Okay. We're not really married to that color. So it's not going to look like something that's like a, a center that's put in New York City where it's very, you know, very, uh, you know, just generic well, color. It's going to be, you're going to put some thought into we, it, right? We, my wife's an art teacher. Trust me, we're going to put thought into okay. it. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, and we're open to any input at all on like, on like colors, if you guys have ideas. Like some of the, we have some big boulders out back. We want to put out front as kind of seating areas to make it look kind of fun and and mm -hmm. welcoming and, and not look like a big commercial building as, as best we can. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, it's more about the water runoff on the back side. Yeah. It looks like it's pretty steep and there's only one drain on the back and then it's like on the corner. 
Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of flip back to here. Yep. So, so currently, what there is, is there's um, the apartment building up here, and there's some stormwater flow that comes up, and this is at a higher plateau yep. than, than the rest of it. So what it does is it flows to a couple of catch basins, and then it goes basically through the middle of the, of the property, another catch basin, and then out across the street. So what we're doing here, and we've had conversations with the abutter and met with them about, obviously we need to, the current line runs right this way. Right. It's to swing this around and adjust the areas for what we need for drainage. So um, so for up here, where it's the apartment complex, it doesn't change anything. Right, my concern is just further yeah. down, from yep. there so, down. Yep. yep, so what we've done here is we looked at, most likely the, there's gonna be the ridge and it's gonna run this way and this way. Correct. We've got catch basins on this side to help catch that flow. And then we have a ditch line along here that will direct any kind of run, the runoff from this side of the roof down along the edge of the property line to a new catch okay. basin that collects this and then brings it off to a common okay. common point. Okay. Yep. So we have the the flow that kind of runs down this way is captured in this catch basin system on this side of the building. Catch basin, catch basin, and then over here we have it grading because we have an elevation difference that this building is going to kind of sit down in the ground in the ground. Uh, that this can be graded to a new catch basin to collect that water okay. and take it that way. Okay. And the elevation difference isn't that great. It's, it's no, I know. It's just when I looked on the plans, I could see that there is elevation yeah, change there's an elevation, yeah. from, from on the back side to where it's like where the drainage is. Yep. So that was just my concern is was one the roof. It, it's going to expel a lot of water. Excellent, absolutely. But then, even right behind, right underneath that catch basin, is still going to be an area that's going to, you know, a, yep. accumulate a lot of water just yep. to, to flow through. Yeah. So, okay. I had an addition. Okay. Dave. Approximately, how high is the 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 roof of this building? Um, I think if you, if you go in the, the packages, if there's a narrative, and if we look at what we need to have for clearances for um, an athletic field in that space to play soccer and move around, I think what we have is about, it's like 28 to 30 feet from, from floor level to the, I'll call it the soffit level. Um, typically, these, these metal buildings have a really a, a flat, flat pitch. So it's going to be a, a 28 to 32 foot from from floor to peak on that side. Okay. And again, to make it to, to, to get this for a building this size, it, it's really um, pre engineered metal building is really the, the only option to get the, the volume that you need that's, that's not uh, you know, super expensive. A lot of this is all coming from donations. They've raised a tremendous amount of money already to, to where they're at with respect to this project um, and then with a lot of donation for in-kind services concrete work you know, uh, help with the building and items like that uh, so um, we're getting there where it is so and that's it's kind of what we look at so um, again you know some of the thoughts in here and it's labeled on here we've got some ideas of um, being able to have a cafe or a place for meals for kids um, Depending on what it is, it's a place for kids to do people to do come in and do laundry if they need to do laundry. Uh, but a place to be able to help the community uh, in this area and, and provide a space in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another uh, concern was: Are all the doors like where the doors are, the exit doors? Are they going to have cement pads on them? Yeah. They, yeah. They do. Um, and we kind of we show it on on here where we have emergency exit doors. They'll have a, a pad that will in a and in the winter time they'll be you know kept clean and, and clear for for emergency access. But the primary area here is the is to because because it in it's kids and you want to be careful. Um, you know, primary is a is a control access in the front where people come through and then use the the. Perimeter exits is really for emergency aspects of it, not primary places where people can come in. Yeah, we'll probably have them buzzered, so if kids do open it from the inside, there'll at least be a, some sort of an alert. 
and I imagine probably some of those emergency doors won't have even hardware on the outside. Correct. Mm -hmm. When do you plan on having this wrapped up in, in there? Or let's just say wrapped up and then ready to get somebody in there. So our hope is if we can break ground in, in April is to hopefully have the building up by fall. That's, that's the goal. And then the interior, we'd start finishing that off as, as material and labor's, labor became available. Um, most of the labor, I think, for the interior is going to be all volunteer labor. Um, and, and I have a ton of friends that are in construction. So I think the basketball court will be the, probably the, be the first thing. The soccer field will be the second thing. Um, and then the second floor will be the, the that'll probably be last. So you're looking at this, let's just say, worst case scenario, you're looking at this point next spring moving in. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I would say a worst, hopefully worst case scenario. Yeah. Worst case scenario, but. Yeah, because we currently we have enough funds to get the excavation, foundation, and shell up. So we already have enough funds for that to get the building um, weather tight. And then after that, I'll be, be raising funds to just get the interior finished off. That's amazing that you take, you've gotten this many donations because you don't have a lot of people that are associated with this place right now, right? No, and just people that, that have a generous heart. Um, nobody makes a salary, so every dollar we get goes directly to either like food, lights, heat, and anything left over goes to the youth center. Um, we had a family donate a house a couple of years ago, and that was like 200000 Um People that donate ten dollars, a thousand dollars, it's it's just it's amazing. That is that is really amazing. I, I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, people are very generous. So yeah, and we're very thankful. Well, especially to get something like this in Berwick because we don't have anything like this right now, really, to say the yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. Um another thing is the parking. Um, proposed to delineate parking area from George Street with curbing, fencing, etc. Yeah. to separate the road from the parking area. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so currently, if we come in uh, on George Street, it's a big wide open area here. Right. And um, <coughs> what we're going to do is we'll show fencing in here to really constrict that so that there's a, um, a, a real pathway, an aisle way in for parking to come in off of that. Because right now, you just kind of pull in wherever you need, wherever you want to. Um, so we'll put in, we'll indicate on an updated plan yeah. the barriers that, to show that if it's fencing and or all, if it's and all the parking. Oh, right. yeah. We'll, we'll have a layout of the parking in there. Yep. We can we can indicate some. There's parking already delineated inside there. There's yep. old paint lines in that. Yep. Um, you know they're not all 100% code compliant. Uh, so there's yeah. about 50 spaces though, and we could always add more spaces if we needed up here. Coming off of whatever street that is, I don't know if that's Lyman or if we needed to add down the yeah, road. If we needed to, but our intent here is really to kind of work with the pavement that we have in this yeah. side. Okay. And we don't really expect a lot of cars. I mean, most of it's going to be kids, teens, either getting dropped off by parents, bus, walk. Right. Um, I think most of the, most of the cars are probably going to be volunteers. Okay. And then another, just a kind of small concern. It seems like the where the buses are going to go. It yep. seems pretty narrow. Um, yeah, it's actually a little bit. It's wider than you think it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so as we come in through here, we have this, um, this, this. Really, it's going to be like a drop off and, and stuff. Um, it's a it's a pretty wide entrance. It does taper down a little bit out in front here, but it's it's an, a wide enough pattern here for a bus to, to okay. have yep. they have room. Um, There's not a lot of room to work with. In that right, 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 right. I understand and, that. Yeah. It's just that my concern would be like over winter, like with plowing and stuff, that that might be an issue later on. So yeah. we we have up here when we plow this, we have all this banking up there that we can push snow at, and also at that end. Because I currently do the plowing now, so okay. And there's there's a ton of room to, to push the snow, and then yeah, even there's some room to push snow up in, up into yeah. here so much, and then on this, and then if we have to maintain it, we can we're going to have to move it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. But we're kind of we're it's a it's a big building, and it's yeah. got to fit in with the, the setbacks, and it's we're kind of pinched a little bit. But so we try to design it as as wide as we could to give us a good sidewalk to be able to have a, a, a safe enough space in that area. Yeah, and the entrance is big enough on the plow trucks actually from the city come in and turn around there okay. and it's it's wide enough for them to take that turn and go down whatever that other side street is. Okay. So. 
and then with the runoff and MS4, because there is some MS4 around that, right? Yep. And that's all. Yep. Yep. So we'll work with town staff to get that squared away. There was okay. a um, there's a typo on there that was caught uh, by the planning staff. Uh, this catch basin, I labeled the. I have the elevation too high. Okay. Where if you look at in the mm -hmm. the CAD, the HydroCAD, the drainage program is set at the right elevation. Okay. Do you or Tammy have anything, Jen? Not yet. Not yet? No, I'm good. You've got everything so far. Okay. Um, I guess the next one is the open space. This is at 23.8% is beneath the required 25%. The waiver should be requested or clarification between the application write-up and note 10 on L1. Yep. So uh, if we look at the, the zone requires, again, the 25% open space, uh, what we looked at is if you kind of draw an air a line that comes across this, this is really about 22%. And then if we, if we looked at other open space around the property, it's kind of it's unknown of what the ordinance says. Is it just green space? Is it, or is it got to be a continuous place that's open? Um, if it if it's just if it's just green space and it's not lot coverage, then I think we're probably pretty close to where it is. But maybe it makes sense for us to ask for a waiver request to, to have something lower. There is a fair amount of green space right in here. This is yeah. all green. That's all green in front of the, um, the main entrance is all green now in addition to the bag. Hey Tim? The reason for that clarification requested is when you look at your application, it says the 23.8% I believe, but when you look at the note, it makes it significantly higher than what you've got on the actual okay. application. Yeah. That's the clarification. Oh, okay. If it was just a little bit, not a problem, but it's such yeah, a great no difference that you might want to take a look at it. Yeah. And you may not need a waiver. One of them just might be a typo. So if you correct the typo, correct yeah. the documents. Well, I guess what, what we, I, I know what it is, is, is working with Dan, who was here at the last meeting. Um, it was, that question is, does the open space have to be like one continuous block? No. All right, so then if that's the case, I think we're going to be OK. And I think mm -hmm. if you look at it, I think that 41% is it's probably probably legit, legitimate, and then we'll we'll get a clarification for that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just wouldn't want you to go through all this work <coughs> and then have it come down to that being the reason sure. why we can't approve it. Yep. Yeah. That would be unfortunate. Yes. <laughs> yep. And I, I just go through the comments that were from town staff. We're you know, we're waiting to hear back from fire chief and the sewer district. Okay. We've heard back from police and water. Yep. Um, we just. I haven't had responses back from those two departments yet. Did they okay. send to fire? Yep. Okay. Yep. Dan said he did send it to fire and yep. police, but we just he hasn't gotten anything back yet. So. Yep. yep. I so did. I did email Dan and ask him to resend it. Okay. But yeah, and I think he did. I just yep. haven't heard. It. Yeah. I'll just I'll, yep. I'll, I'll stop it and see the chief and put him for it. Okay. And then we'll same with the sewer district. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I don't know if Tammy talked to you, but the distance between the buildings. Yeah, I guess the, the question, I wasn't sure what that was referencing. It's, I mean, the dis you're talking about the distance between this building and that building? And yeah. then the other two buildings? Yep. Um, just for clarification, to make sure we can get the emergency access oh, sure. for okay. the fire truck, the ambulance, yep. anything that might. Anything that might need to get through there. Yep. Right. Well, well, I can add that. Yep. Yeah, I have to be negative nilly when we're dealing with children. I have to make sure there's room to get access in there for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So. In, in the back, you can get behind the current House Hope building now and go, there's plenty of room to get a fire truck back there. Right, but that's not always going to be where the fire is or yeah, agreed. the need is. Yeah, yep. agreed. Yeah. yeah, and I'll also remember that this, this building will be sprinkled just based on the, the yep. use and yep. the size. But if you've got athletics going on in there, our EMTs may arrive in a fire truck. We don't want them going from the back to the front when sure. somebody broke a leg and it's sticking out. Yep. It, worst case scenario, I yeah. would have them covered. Good <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, yep, man. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you hunt, you come I up see one of those in my life, and that's enough. All that's all I want to see. Gary, <laughs> you got a question to follow up with what you said. Because of this, where they could have buses and stuff going in, does that have to be the signage on that road or something be changed to accommodate that as like a school zone? Or, you know, see what I'm getting at? In other words, so that's a state road. 
Sorry, Tammy, nope. go ahead. Nope, go ahead. You it, got it. So it's the state road. So that would be a good question for the DOT. Yeah, and, and, it, and it won't be a school zone because it's not a school. Okay. That's the only way that, that you could have the... Most the likely they'll put up... Roads post that 25. Anyway. Post that 25, okay. yeah. Yep. People, yeah. people go and to it's 70. close to the intersection, so yes. yeah. hopefully no. they're coming around slow. <laughs> up on that point, uh, yeah. Jerry, they haven't, they haven't Mr. There. Chair, if I, if yeah. I can yeah. just answer that question for you, Jerry. Um, most likely they'll want to put up children at play signage um, and entrance and exit signs. Um, will be posted, but that is something that the applicant will have to contact the main DOT for. It is that, a state that's road. That's kind of what I was asking. In other words, there's kids going to be there. That's correct. I, I, no, you're I, right I, on. And I yep. think we'll have a ton of buses. It'll probably be like after school, maybe one bus. Right. And, and, and again, we haven't even talked to school yet about that. Just the kids going in and out, like Ben said. In other words, people got to be aware. Yeah, just the proper the, signage. The use of that's going to change because of your building. Yep. So they might not be aware of it. So. Yep. That's an easy conversation. Okay. So, yep, great, great okay. find. So coming up with the use, uh, seeing that uh, conditional use will be required for this use, the application should also be requesting a conditional use instead of just the site plan for the front page of the application. Yep. Yeah, so we'll, we'll submit the, the, that checkbox or checkbox it now in that okay. area for, for both the conditional use and the site plan. Okay. Yeah. I guess uh, I know that we, Dan and I thought that kind of cover both but we'll get that squared away yeah okay. well with it being a permanent forever file if you only do conditional use uh site plan review you'll be back for the conditional use. oh okay yep hence you don't want to go through we'll do again we'll get it all done in one right. shot right yep. mm -hmm. okay yep. well that was my thought when i looked at it i said they've got all these boxes checked they got all this information here but the front page of the application does not state that okay so Okay, and then the last thing I had was request a statement of financial capacity or security performance charity bond. Yeah, I think what we can do is, is I'll work with Mike. Um, as he mentioned, he, you know, he's to, where he's at with the donations. Yep. And we can come up with a, a letter, letter of credit to talk about how that, that's going to work. Okay. Yep. I don't think a bond is needed for this situation. I think hopefully, yeah. Just because bonds, it's easier for it to. And it's less costly to get a letter of credit than it is to go pay for a bond for, for a situation Would like we that. need a letter of credit for the whole project or just to get the shell encapsulated and get it? Because again, we're, we, we are raising money to finish the interior. We've got enough to get the shell and get it weather tight and get the outside of the building looking nice. But the interior, so I mean, are we going to need to get that for the whole building or, or is it enough? I don't think, I don't think the interior, I don't think the interior I just think to get the shell of the, the body put up there. That's okay. what you're in here for. I mean, we don't really know what the inside looks like, and the inside could change. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we could tweak things a little bit. as, it, as we it could tweak. So I would say just to get the structure up. And the site work. Yep. And the site work, right. yeah. yeah. Okay, which which we have enough funds for that. Yep. Yeah. I think we're at 880000 So, um, and our goal is to build it without any debt. So. Yeah, so I think that you guys... I think that's that's right on. Okay, so we d so we don't need that then, or do you need proof of having those funds? I think I think yes. proof. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. It's just to make sure that you know once you start breaking ground that the building's going to get built. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. We know you're not going to have a half-built building there for 15 years. We know that. Yeah. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> we just got to make sure. Agreed. Yep. Fair enough. And one of our rules on our board is even with the funds we have, we'll still have six months reserves for the soup kitchen and our regular expenses. Mm -hmm. So, that's yep. awesome. Anything else? No. I'm good. be the next step for the board is it a, is it a site walk is it if you wanted to do the sidewalk in public hearing like the first meeting in April you could do that both on the same night okay because right now you have nothing scheduled in April yet okay does that sound I think that works okay site walk in public hearing on I think it's April 7th you might want to double check it, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think it is April 7th. Yeah. So April 7th. What time do you want the site walk? 5 o'clock. Alrighty. 
in the public hearing at 6 30. application complete yeah we'll need a motion for the application to be complete okay. um make motion that the application is complete i'll second okay further discussion didn't don't they have to check a box off or something yeah yeah that's part of they'll come back with okay. all of before they before the public hearing they have time to do mm -hmm. everything we've mentioned tonight so when they come back for april 7th they'll have a complete packet all corrected everything included so when you see it i send it to you <laughs> you'll have the final package okay all in favor aye okay thank you great thank, thank you guys so much gentlemen Okay, moving right along. Oh, business subdivision. Second amendment to Richard DeMars, approved subdivision by Les Bodwell, aka Navina Acres, LLC, tax map R44, lot 21-5. Thank you. Thank Good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Stevens. I'm with Civil Consultants, just like the last group, just a different part. Um, and I'm here representing uh, Les Bodwell and uh, Navina Acres for second modification to approve subdivision. Uh, we talked about it, or I presented the information uh, at the, your last meeting on the 17th. I can quickly go through this again, or I don't. How, how do you want to do this? Do you gentlemen want to see it again, or do you have no, specific questions for him? I don't need to see it again. I don't. That's just me. I don't need to see it again. But if anybody no, else would like I, to see I don't. It. I don't need to see it again. Okay. okay. Um, what we are looking for, uh, our original request was for a waiver to. Since it's an amendment to an approved subdivision, since it created lots or creates lots, it technically requires a preliminary, uh, go through preliminary submission and then final submission. And our contention, or it, as presented, was that we felt that we didn't really need to do the preliminary part um, because we had done that both as part of the original Navina Acres project, which included this material up here for a total of 53 lots. This was a significant reduction just down to 14 lots. And that this actually, as configured, matched the original <coughs> Desmaris subdivision that was approved in 2008, because the first amendment to that project literally just locked it off here and this was left as an undeveloped site and all we're trying to do is put it back to the 14 lots that were in that original project to the extent that we've kept all of the property lines the same as that original approved project we've kept the road location where it was we've kept the uh, road geometry the curves the elevations exactly with, as it was approved in 2008. The only thing we've done is upgrade things that might have changed over time. For example, stormwater rules have changed, so we had to modify the stormwater uh, setup. The Corps of Engineer requirements for how you can do your wetlands crossings and so forth have changed, so we're meeting the new requirements for those. And that's the only thing we've updated is we've updated the various standards. We've updated the water, we've updated the sewer. Sewer department have changed the type of pump stations they like. So we have a whole new type of pump station than we had uh, just because they have a preference for a different model and uh, style now. Mm. Um, we had already received the water and fire letters approving the project back when we submitted actually back in December I think is when we first put it in we have since received the sewer uh, agreement or approval of our proposed plans um, I just haven't had a chance to to get it to the planning office pending 
your agreement on what we should be doing next. Uh, we, I checked today and found out that the uh, Corps of Engineers, the only thing they are trying to decide is they've agreed with our crossings, and our fills and so forth. Um, they, they're looking for a monetary contribution for some of the impacts. They just haven't decided what that number is going to be. So until they tell us the number, they won't give us a letter. The DEP, as luck would have it, has changed review engineers twice since we submitted this to their office. And so we're waiting to hear from the latest review engineer of what the comments are. Um, hopefully they have their act together and we'll, we'll know by the end of next week before the next meeting. Um, but if they keep changing people, is we don't know how long that could take. It, it was a surprise to us, but they've apparently gone through people faster than we do. But our, our request remains that we would like to be able to go to a submittal for final approval. Uh, we recognize that the public hearing is warranted as we change substantially from the 53 lot project to a 19 lot project. Um, I know at the last meeting there was a feeling that we needed to have a site walk, which I don't necessarily disagree with. I've been there so many times I personally don't need to go. But I don't know that that's important in deciding on whether or not we can go to a final approval situation. So I guess for, with my understanding, it seems like um, the preliminary information is from the old plans and it hasn't been moved towards the new plans. Okay, the preliminary information that we had last year when the project got preliminary approval yes. for the 53 lot thing. What we have not done is we haven't gone through all of those where the plans would show, you know, the, the site, right. cut off half the site because literally it's the same information right. that it was right. combined. It's just not so. with this, this application is what I'm saying. No, we have not given you, Any we have not redone those sheets because right. that's what we're trying to avoid. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is like when you took that away and started this one, it starts a whole new is what I is what I've been understood as. So some of that information still has to go with it. It's just so if someone goes and looks it up and they need some information, if we don't have that, then we don't we don't have it. Right. Everything else is documented, but then we don't have it because it's part of another application that we don't we didn't even it's already come and gone. You understand what I'm saying with that? I, I do. Um, I, I guess I'm sitting there saying that, that it could be referenced. But I can answer that part. When you withdrew Nibba, Navina Acres, that goes away. When you, in other so words, we don't have any more history of that. Right. So there's nothing to reference. Right. Basically. But there is a way that this can happen in one meeting. I've done some checking. <laughs> and what you can do is the only thing I need digitally that I could share with the board would be a preliminary application. So all you have to do is take that information provide one copy to go in the folder <clears throat> they will then come to the meeting after they do if they opt for a site walk and for the public hearing they will approve that preliminary meeting the preliminary information because they can do this all in one night okay so they approve the preliminary and then they approve the final all in one night the reason we have to have the documentation is because we're not all going to be here forever. Part of the, part of the permanent record. Yep. Correct. Yep. Yeah, and sense. those yes. records have to be kept forever. I'm not saying provide seven or eight copies, whatever you normally would provide for the preliminary. One paper copy that they would approve if they amend or condition anything 
of course that would have to be added of course but we can't tell yet if it's going to be you could then for the final present your final packet if they want the preliminary amended you add the amendment to the final after the fact basically you provide it at the next meeting all fixed up and all corrected so therefore they can approve it with that does that path, make sense okay he does <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. I don't have anything to do. <laughs> so it's, it's more just creating one paper copy. Just having that document in the file. Yeah. Correct. I mean, and that I, makes sense. I mean, that makes perfect sense. In, in this way, Les, if you want to, like, I've heard rumor that you're going to take and possibly purchase the other side and, and do something with it. It's not before the board. It doesn't matter to me. But this way, we have both sets, and you can reference from one to the other if people have questions. They don't constantly have to be going, you're less. They can come in and look at the plan. I prefer that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for everybody and to get you through the process. I just can't make it as one meeting. But we can do preliminary and final in one meeting. That's, I can't make it any quicker than that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's the process we got to follow. I mean, okay. you know. So technically, your waiver could be approved, but I'm still going to have that preliminary information to get it to find me. That's, that's where the problem is. Okay, now the... So the submission that I made that was technically final is probably fine. I just need to have a previous the information to go in front of what I've already given you. Correct. And Correct. maybe fill out a little more because we have heard from the sewer department and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what What can we do today? Well, I mean, what would be the next step from here? If, if should the, the date if for the public hearing? That well, would be great. If you could would do they that. be complete? If you if you agree to the board and make the motion that they submit the preliminary plan for the records and also the final for the date of the public hearing or the sidewalk if you so deem it. But then you've got to pick a date for this. We need the sidewalk at four PM. Yep. In the first week of month March. April. April. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. I've walked this twice. You've walked this twice. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. You've walked this twice. Twice. You need to go back. Unless okay. you need a body. Like yes, we're oh. going to need a body because we've got to have three of you at a minimum of, on the site box. You want to walk it? I, I don't need to. Okay. I've done it before. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess at this point would be to pending. Well. Because I haven't walked it before, I can always contact these gentlemen and say, let's go for a walk. Yep. And it doesn't have, I'm just walking it so I can get spatial references on it. Okay. it. It's nothing that has to be done officially and technically I don't have to do it. But without doing it, I don't have a better reference for support on either side. Okay. Les would be happy to meet you out there any day. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's fully marked. I mean, yeah. it's it, all of the road stations are out there. Yeah, um, I, can, I can point them all out to you, you know, based on the plan and the, the markers. We, would it be a problem if we did it closer to the date of the public hearing in hopes that some of the snow will be gone so I can actually see oh. better? Well, I'll just, you know. I'll just say that in that time, that's probably mud season. That's okay. <laughs> I, I, have, I have my season. Right We're now. good. Yeah. We're good. I'm fine either way. You tell me when and I'll be there. Okay. This, this, okay. Is, this is what I do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so does somebody want to make a motion? Well, before, before that, yeah. I'd just like to ask about one more thing. Um, when it was the 54 lot submission, there was an issue or an, a topic about the historical or archaeological spot in that area. For what study will be done to investigate that area, or is that part of this area? Is well, it part of the half linger? Okay, that when I say nothing changed between the. You got a big one, Mike. I forget. Oh. It's, it's just so that people. 
If if you look at your um, comprehensive plan, which is where that information came from, and we actually gave it to you, um, the line that says that an area of potentially historic interest literally stops at Coffin Brook. We're not changing anything between here and Coffin Brook. Okay. So we don't see what value there is in doing no, I, It was area just there, there so I, it's right. not in the affected area. You know, the area okay. that we're developing is now. Not in that zone. Okay. If you look at the original 52 lot project, which I actually happen to have here, in the 52 lot project where you've got Coffin Brook. You actually had lots that went to Coffin Brook. Okay. That might now be something to be worth looking at. Okay. Now, if you actually go out and look at that, you'll see it's been so disturbed. You can't it doesn't really make any sense. Right. But in this particular case, everything we're doing is, is after the brook. Okay. I so just wanted to make sure, location wise, that, you know, no, that it was brought up before, so it's just one of those. Yeah, things. That's, that's why it was not considered a big concern uh, for this yep so what if i may uh which which lots currently have houses on them with the butters in them none of these lots that are shown here none right? of my lots okay none of the new lots the old okay the one, one through 19, 19 are new lots right and they're all across coffin brook I don't got think it one all right all right it's one through fourteen now. The front of half yeah, of the but lane. Yeah, uh, but it's like on this plan, they're yep. all even the four that are up front are yep. still labeled lot numbers. Well, if you yeah, so that's why that's my question. Is go back a couple more pages, and you'll have their new design. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's right. The very first one you have. Yeah, we got that. All right. Approved yeah. project. Right. And right. those numbers were counted. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we have the new ones. So, so your your development is all on the other side of the open space. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, the sewer. You said you updated it. When I looked at the plans last, it had the what was it two thousand and um, seven eight eight, eight. Yeah, two thousand and eight right. printout on it. So is that gonna you gonna have the up, is there an updated version of that or actually the one that's on the in, I think in the, the last one in this shows the lot in the right place where the pump station's going. Yes. Um, because we did give you the most current plan at the time. And yep. we, we, when we talked with the Sioux District, they didn't change where we put it. They just changed what the guts were yeah, inside the, design the station. Of it. Right, right. right. That's, that was my concern. I, I, the last thing I saw was it was just dated on the 2008. So I didn't know if there's right. any substantial changes in the... Nope, if you, if you actually take the 2008 plan and overlay it over the, it's the ASP plan, you'll find that that's exactly where the pump station was going in 2008. Yes. The 20, uh, 54, 53 lot subdivision actually had the pump station down here on this side of the road. So what we did, we put it back to where it was in 2008 but the insides are different. We're going with a submersible, submersible Gorman Rupp, which was not what was proposed in 2008. Okay. So, so will you be providing a new description of that on the big paper? Because I think my big paper that, that's what I'm had asked, for final. That's what I'm oh, the, 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 right, the stuff for final will be all based on, on the, the on new On the plate. new requirement, okay. Right. Yeah, so and we've drawn asked. it all up. It just yeah. didn't make sense to give it to you before right. we got through tonight. Yep. Okay. And so no, fine. that'll be part of the final. Yep. Mr. Chair? Yes. I can address this while he's looking at it. Um, on the final plan that you had submitted to me a month and a half ago or so, it still listed both lots from the original Nabina Acres. That other lot needs to be removed from all of the pages for this plan. Um, 
I, I probably need to talk to you about that because I'm not sure I know what page that was that had that. Okay. All right. Law. I can show it to you after the meeting if you want. Yeah. Well, right, we've, we'll, we'll right have there. some time. Yep. Yep. Um, because I, I noticed your comment and I sat there and said, no, we're only using yes. this lot. Right. Now, that other lot that number would appear as in the butter. Nope. At the very bottom of the page. Oh, down here. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's right. something that if somebody comes in and sees that, they'll want to see the rest of the plan. Hence, you're not doing both lots. Okay. That's one we did not pick up on. Yeah. Well, you got a couple okay. of them off there, which was kind of, it was like, oh, okay, they get disturbed. Not a problem. <laughs> no, you're right. That That's left over from when it was combined. Yep. You're right. So, now I know what that comment is. <laughs> I still don't. <laughs> well, the way the plans are filed in the town records, it's always by map and lot of what's being affected by whatever the plans are. Yep. This plan says that this project affects both lots 20 and 21.5. Oh, 21.5 is the only one we're actually changing, so we got to get 20 off. Okay. That reference. Okay, because it could confuse the way they file the records. Yep. I, I understand. Or if somebody comes in and looks at it because the yep. 21 was first, or the, the wrong lot was first. So, another thing is the open space des designation should be marked on the plans and a note added as to how much acreage of each open space designation. Okay, the, the open space is noted, uh, but it does not show the acreage. Yep. So, because it didn't have a separate lot number. Uh, but we, we can obviously make a notation to show what the acreage is that's in there. Okay. I think the other comment that was part of that was whether or not it was active open space or passive open space. And I've got two answers for you. <laughs> One, we were just going to leave it as open space for use by obviously the people who are going to be the homeowners out here. And they could decide if they wanted to make it an active area by putting in picnic tables or a little field or something. A different comment responding to a DEP comment uh, got us out there looking at some of the fauna, bushes and trees and stuff. And it was noted that there are a couple of big beech trees, which doesn't mean anything to me, but they are in this open space. Now, our most current plan, we have added the location of those big trees, but based on where they are, it may not be possible to turn it into a ball field because we take out the tree that we just identified. We had previously identified in the big project a huge oak tree back here that we went to all kinds of efforts to preserve because it was right on a lot line that was going to be in the middle of a house. We readjusted stuff. In this particular case, the two trees are in open space, which is perfect. It wasn't going to be impacted other than if someone tried to put in a field of some kind, it would happen. But we have no problem saying that those trees are not to be impacted as part of whatever the homeowners decide to do with their open space, you know, to preserve those trees. Anything that's in wetlands, we obviously are preserving anyway, because we're saying nobody can go in any of these wetlands, whether it's these wetlands, these wetlands, this wetland, those are all preserved anyway. Mm -hmm. But these two trees are here, and it turns out there's a third one that's literally on a lot line back here. It's in setback zones, so nobody could do anything anyway, so we will mark that. I think there's a note in here that the buffer zones should have tags on them, you know, do not disturb and stuff, when we've got no problem doing that. We can also put those same type of do not disturb notes around those trees if that 
would make everybody feel better. It's not a planning board issue. Yeah, it's not a planning board mm -hmm. issue. So. But, uh, um, no, we currently planning it system. Oh, okay. Because it is. it's a main DEP, those beech trees. Oh, yes, sir. Those beech trees getting that big, you will not find many of them in the state of Maine. Like beech, beech trees are my favorite tree, too, so I yep. have a little, yep. a little uh, beech, sentimental Beech trees idea. are very important to wildlife. Do you know why? If you hunt, you know, but that's my <laughs> side life. The beech trees, when it gets into a deprived of water, the leaves will all curl up. So when it does get any moisture on it, the animals will come and drink the water coming out of the folded up leaf. Mm -hmm. So hence, a beech tree can go through a drought easier than other trees can, but yet still maintain and sustain the life around it. So putting the signs up, yes. Please. I mean, so we should look and note that down. on the plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we found some uh, butterfly habitats too in the wetlands, which are not an area we're disturbing, but we had to have a study done for uh, butterflies, swallowtail butterflies. So it's actually kind of cool, you know. I'm like, it's uh, they, they have the caterpillars that have like the fake eyes on them. Oh yeah. So yeah, those are kind of neat to watch too. Yeah. Mm. So the signs where they. Um, have requested or noted like the butterflies the wetlands and people can cut down into the setback so those areas that have the trees in them those property owners will need to know they cannot disturb anything past this point right and, yep. and we can put notes on ours like I say the one that's over here when I, I, I'm not sure I don't remember whether it was this side of the lot line uh, property line or that side it's on the other side yeah, whoever does anything. Whoever does that something one. over there is going to have to know. Right. But, you know, at yeah. this point in time, you know, we, yeah. we at least found it. Yeah. Uh, and we located the, just for less, uh, to make you understand a little more about the butterfly one, the butterfly in question only lives on spice bush and sassafras. And spice bush is an endangered species of plant. And spice bush for a tree, uh, for a bush rather, is. Well, it's high on the list of ones that to be saved. So what we've done is he located all of the spice bushes on this. We have, again, located them on our plan so we can show this is where they were. All of the spice bushes were within the wetlands that we can't touch anyway. The only ones that might be close is, believe it or not, there's one on either side of the right of way. So when they're doing their road work, we're going to have to watch and see how the side slopes go down to taper into existing ground. If it looks like it hits the spice bush, we're going to say that it has to be relocated to get it out from under the fill. But literally, that's all we can do for the, for the spice bush. The ones that they found were, with the exception of one on either side right in here, they were way out here or way up here. And they even found some up in this wetland, but they were literally all in the wetlands. Okay. One other question, your homeowners association, can you also put that as a covenant in your homeowners association that they can't cut along with putting the signs out? You know, as a reminder, you signed the homeowners covenant, a homeowners association, make that statement in there about they can't cut in certain buffered areas. Would that be in the homeowners association or would that be a deed restriction? It would be a if deed you, restriction. It would be a deed <laughs> restriction, yes, that would be stronger. But if it's also in your homeowners association, that'll be a second reminder for them. Okay. Hence, might help alleviate any issues with it. Sure. You know, just something to not create more havoc for you after the fact. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that's easy enough. That's just a line item. Yep. Association. Because you're going to provide us a copy, right? So we can yep. send it out and read it. Thank you. The other thing is the homeowners association will homeowners association docs will talk about the homeowners association maintaining the road um, because it's it has to be a private road is it? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all know uh, the town will no longer accept dead end streets and so the HOA is going to have to pick up any maintenance and you know ongoing stuff with that so that will be in it. Um, I, I think Russ has them like halfway drawn up. We're just 
want to fill in some of the blanks. We're kind of, we're kind of melding the, the original homeowners association from the original subdivision with this because I think as we talked about in the last meeting, I can't I can't put covenants in the new one and make the original homeowners right comply with it unless that, they agree. Right. Yeah. So that's that's the struggle that, that we're going through right now is you know what doesn't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse type thing, you know. So I guess I guess line seven says a, a breakdown of the estimated cost for infrastructure improvement. Um, we've given you that. You need you need a or a breakdown. You need a complete breakdown on that. Like yeah. How much water is on the sewers? So, okay, yeah. I can get you that. Yeah, okay, and it's, we're, we're going it's to, when you get to final, it needs to be done. Right. So well, we've we've actually put together a newer one based on what this plan shows. What we would like to do is say this is what the sewer is, not break it out by sewer manhole, by frames and grates, no. manholes and stuff. <laughs> sewer. Just sewer and do it that way and we can give you a road, sewer, water, yeah. you know, major categories. Yeah, whatever the infrastructure is that you're going to be addressing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we would definitely give you that as part of our next yeah. submission. So I, think, I, I guess the next question I would have uh, moving along on that budget item is uh, prior to final approval, uh, pr require a bond for the cost of construction under Article 13 performance guarantee. Um, does that have to be a bond or can I give you a letter of credit from my bank? I, have, I actually have a funding letter from my bank for this, but I also, in addition, could give you a letter of credit showing that I have the uh, financial capacity to take care of this. Yep. Yeah. Well, he also has a, a current bond sitting with the town already from one of your other projects. So the reason for this was, is there enough money in that to cover this that you're I doing have a now? With you, guys? you have a balance over there, yeah. You kept saying you had a balance here in town, and it's like, really? Yeah, but I, I don't. I don't think it's me. I think that. I think that the uh, original subdivision. Uh, no, the I'm the road had money in there to finish the road that they never yeah. finished. Okay, so it would be under Halflinger. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm yeah, pretty sure I, I, I remember you talking about, about yeah. that last time, the last meeting. Yeah. Right yeah. So I'll change it to a letter of credit. Not okay. a problem. Okay. Um, the item number ten that you noted that the uh, culverts should be habitat friendly. The Army Corps is now taking over all review of all culverts in wetlands crossings and stream crossings and so okay. forth. They are covering that, believe me, in what <laughs> they have gone through. Uh, this Coffin Brook is a double barreled arch culvert with gravel bottoms and the whole bit. Uh, they, they definitely are yeah, we, we were on the phone talking about this earlier today, and I, my hearing's not the best all the time. And I was in my shop, and you know, there's background noise. And I thought he was saying cat friendly. He was saying habitat, but I thought he was saying cat friendly. And I'm like, I gotta make the covers cat friendly. I mean, is this a place they hang out? I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't envision cats climbing up in those culverts, but yeah. But okay, if that's what you need. That's right. what You'd yeah. actually be surprised if it falls too. up in those right. culverts. Yeah. 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 And number 11 is what we've already talked about. Right. So that one's already been agreed upon. So now let's just stay complete now. So how are we saying that? <laughs> because it's, all right. The first thing you want to address is the waiver. You could say you accept the waiver with the condition that all preliminary approval documentation be provided to the town. So technically the waiver is approved with the caveat that you got to provide the preliminary information just in case. And the well, final. So we have it on record. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. And does that does that seem? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Stuff, right? well, we could do that. Okay. I get the motion for granting the waiver with the condition. With the condition. Wait, to provide <laughs> preliminary subdivision information to the town. And I will second that. Well, someone, you, Somebody's got to first it. <laughs> oh, I thought you were making a motion. <laughs> no, no, no. I, was, I was looking for it. Then I'm, I'll make the initial motion. I'll second that motion. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Okay. Okay, so now Request you can. Granted. Yep, now you can deem it complete. Because if you're going to do the public hearing, it's going to yep, be complete. I'll make a motion that we find this application complete. And I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Like that trade off? Okay, <laughs> now schedule the public hearing. The public hearing in. No, if you're not going to do a sidewalk, I should just, for everybody's benefit, suggest not to make a motion to pass because all of the board members have been on it, have been over to the site repeatedly, or something to that effect. Okay. Okay. So, do we want to do the sidewalk? I, I mean, you guys have we've already been there. Been there twice. And then mm -hmm. Yeah, twice. Okay. I would make a motion then that uh, on this particular application we do not do a site walk because members have had the opportunity to look at the site. I'll second that. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Okay. Hold on. <laughs> I wish I took shorthand in high school. I really <laughs> do. <laughs> Okay. Site walk, site walk, we don't need public hearing date. And it just has to be... Now, I have to advertise twice because it's a subdivision. We don't have a local paper. Well, we have a local paper, but it'll cost you $780 an ad to get it in that paper. To run it twice. Two weeks, a, a week apart. Or, I can advertise in the Weekly Sentinel at $78 a week. Your call. I like $78 a week. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> Thank you. April 7th. So. Um, is it April 7th? She April has to post it for twice. two weeks. So yeah, it would be April 7th. I'm, I'm pretty sure week. April 7th will work. Mm -hmm. But I've got to go back Monday morning. I'll look at the calendar for sure to let you know. I'm pretty sure it, it will work because there's another two weeks after the last, the next meeting. Yeah. I, that's right. There are five Thursdays yeah. in yeah. March, so, so we should, should be okay. 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 All right. And that's it. We're done. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. New business. No new business. Public comment. Open up the last public comment. Okay, so you're going to one step forward, close that, informational items. Do you have something? Um, the Board of Selectmen are looking at the final review of the ordinance amendments that we had recommended they do. So I don't have an actual breakdown yet because I had to revise a couple of them, which were good revisions. They, I don't think you would have had any objection to them. So I took and got them and got them up to them because I had to have them by today at noon time. Um, one is on the disorderly building. They want to take and make it a 45, within 45 days, three offenses. You're good, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything after the third offense remains at $2,500. They don't go back to zero. It remains at $2,500, anything going forward after that. But they gave them a 45-day window. So I don't know if that's what they were looking for until this Tuesday when I meet with the board again. So, and the road piece got taken out for the private road, how many houses before you pave it? 
that piece get taken out they want to look at that more so I'm hoping they'll start talking again about it over the summer and we can get it on in November if that's an option so okay, okay. anything else for me? Yeah, so I just want to let you know, um, Jenny McCabe, Code Enforcement Officer for Town of Berwick, um, there is an increase of violation letters. We sent out seven this week um, for all different things, um, trash in the yard, illegal, um, room and board, things like that. So just, you know, spring's coming. As always, clean up your yard, clean up your space, and uh, check out our land use ordinance before you start, you know, creating campgrounds in your yard and other things like that. That's the only thing we ask. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and, you know, me or Tammy would be happy to assist you further on what you need to do. Yeah, a lot of wind lately. Been blowing up a lot of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Any other informational items? No. Okay. Next to the adjournment. Make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that motion. All right, all Time. Good. All right. We're at time right now.